Sorry about that. No one's seasick. All right. So I've drawn this roof like this because this is the wind blowing this way now. Okay. And that's a flat surface. And again, the area, sorry, the force on the roof is proportional, or it varies according to how far along the building you go. So this is in table 5.3a, where for 0 to 0.5h, h is the height of the building. So from there, to say there, that's h. So half an h is about there. You've got 0 0.9 and 0 0.4. That's an uplift, because they're negative. Then from half h to 1h, you've actually got the same thing. 1h to 2h, you've got 0 0.5 and 0. And then once you get beyond here, you've got 0 0.3 and 0 0.1. That's negative, 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 negative. And then beyond 3h, you've got minus 0 0.2 and positive 0 0.2. So it's saying that up here, you're going to get uplift only. And by the time you get down here on the roof, you're going to have up or down force. Okay. So that comes into play when you've got a long, low building. If it's a very tall building, this you're is up in this region here. All right, let's do an example. I'll move to this board. All right. That might work. Okay. So let's get a building which is a portal frame. Basically, let's go to the steel shed. All right. Everyone happy with that building? Mm -hmm. And we'll call uh, that way north, that way south. That would make that east, and that would make that west. Okay. Now, a western wind is one which blows from the west. So it blows in an easterly direction. Which took me years to get my head around. <laughs> so, all right. So we're going to draw out several versions of this. All right. Let's take let's take the west load, the western wind first. Okay. So that's the wind blowing on that. You guys agree with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, we have a force on the wall, and we have two possible, um, two possible internal pressures. One of them, well, we might have two internal pressures. You could have one depending on the geometry, but let's say we've got two. One of them could be an inflation, one of them could be either deflation or zero. So, we'll go with deflation. Okay, so we're already considering two load cases here. On the uplift side, uh, so on the upwind side of the roof, we have <coughs> two possible uplifts. There's one possible uplift. And on the downwind side, we're lucky we only have one uplift. Okay. Now, that's that one, and we've got a small one there, so now we're into four load cases. So here, there's a smaller load case, and that load case there. And one's with the inflation, and one is with the deflation. Okay, and now this upwind load on the wall is always there. So we'll do that for all four. Okay, and the lee wall is always there, so I'll do that for all four. And for those who can't see it in the video, the bottom one is just like the same as that one, but with deflation forces. And now remember we had the larger force there, uplift. <coughs> And that was the smaller force. So, to recap, we got 
two different internal pressures. We've got two different uplifts on the upstream side of the up, upwind side of the roof. So that's four load cases already. Okay. Uh, now we're going to go. So that's that wind. Yeah. Okay. Now if we is that all for this wind direction? It is, unless we had. Um, now, if that was quite a long distance compared to the height of the building, that could actually diminish as you go up there like that. So be aware of that. Okay. All right, so that's four load cases for one wind direction only. Now let's turn it around and put the wind that way. So I'm going to go start doing miniature now. Let's try drawing something. Okay, now the wind at this time blows this way. Okay, if our building is symmetrical, you get the exact opposite of that. Um, where you run into trouble is if, let's say you have a big garage door there, but not one on that side, um, then your internal pressures are going to be different. So there are going to be four different load cases. Um, now I didn't, yes. Internal pressure that changes according to what the building is doing. If you have a garage door, when the storm hits, is the garage door open or closed? closed Sorry? Normally closed. Normally closed, but unless you're willing to bet the building on that fact, you've got to consider that it might be open. Garage doors also blow in, so the, yeah. So if, if the garage door blows in, then it's always open. Okay? <laughs> Right. Well, you've got a design for both cases where I'm getting at. Um, if the garage door is always going to be blown in, then you can design for it always to be open. But if someone comes along in 10 years' time and puts a better garage door on, then it might be closed. So if you're going to design just for one wind case, remember that you're betting the building on the fact that the other wind case is not going to be there. Okay. So yes, you've got to design... So instead of having two different internal pressures, we probably have four or more internal pressures. So you've got to look at the configuration of the building. So this one is now door closed, all four of those. So in fact, over here, we're not quite up to that yet. We're still considering the wind going this way, this time with the door open or windows open, or whatever the case is. Um, and there, all the, all the forces on the outside are the same, because the w uplift here, this wind doesn't know if that door is open or closed. Okay, so that's going to be the same. What's going to change is the internal pressure. Um, I normally like to design that internal pressure as being there or not being there. How do I have confidence the internal pressure is going to happen, especially if these forces are countering each other, like in this low case down here. Sorry, this low case down here, where it's pulling down and lifting up at the same time. How do you know that's actually going to happen? It makes me uneasy a bit. So we're designing for the internal pressure to be there or not. The internal pressure to be whatever it could be. And what you can do is go through the scenarios and work out the worst inflation and the worst deflation effect, and then design for that. So yes, if you do that, we might be back to just these two, two internal wind, wind load cases, internal wind pressure, so. All right. So then we, like I say, we blow the wind from this direction now, and we do it all again on that side, okay? All right, now let's, let's blow the wind into the building this way. So that's a south wind. Okay. So the wind's blowing into the building that way. Now we've got different load cases on the roof. We've still got an internal pressure. <laughs> so <laughs> still got one internal set, possibly inflating or zero, one internal flat, possibly uh, deflating or zero. Okay. So this is all the wind south. 
Now, if I draw this in plan, um, no, it's not a plan. It's called elevation. Okay, so here's somebody standing. Okay. <coughs> it's in elevation. The wind is blowing that. You guys agree that that fits with that? So we're imagining that our building is a line of portal frames. Okay. I'll look us there. And the wind on the roof, if this, because this is presenting, however steep that is, you still take the slope of zero when the wind's blowing that way. Because it's presenting flat, basically, the surface. Uh, and you notice in the table the wind starts off from, if that's H, from zero to half H, it's 0.9. Uplift or 0 0.4, which is 0 to 1 inch is 0.9. Then it drops to 0.5. From, that's from um, 1 inch to 2 inch. 1 times the height times 2 times the height. Then it drops down to 0.3. And then after 3 inch, it drops down to 0.2. Okay? So that's all uplift. In the other alternative, uplift is a bit less than that, and, or then to zero. Once you get to here, you start getting the possibility of downforce. Okay? All right. Now, if we take, if we consider our portal frame that's right there, okay, we draw that, we've got... <coughs> quite a high uplift on there. Okay, and whatever internal pressures there might be. And if you remember the side forces on the external wall all the way from here, you're going to have a wind blowing that way on that wall and that way on that wall. So you imagine a portal frame loaded like that, the whole thing is going to tilt this way. The portal frame, because those are pulling out, is going to react quite differently. So that's a very different load case to that one. All right. If you take a slice all the way down through this, consider this portal frame down here, then the side loading is going to be much less. And the wind loading is either going to be downforce uh, so I do it like that. Or it's going to be enough force. So there's another load case. Okay. So that was a slice down here. And that was a load case. Um, get to those. Now that's the downforce that has to get added. Both these upwards and downforce have to get added to the internal pressure. So if there's an internal pressure deflating the building, that's a severe load case. If there's an e internal pressure inflating load the building, that's fine. Although it works a bit on the walls, that's the most serious one when it's inflating the building because it's pushing up against that, it's pushing up.